Hey, it's Drybear. No More Room in Hell 2 just came out. I've been messing with it a bunch, and I wanted to give you a combination of both a launch review for early access and also just first impressions, and is the game worth it in its current state? Now, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, and I'm just gonna get this out of the way first, in that the game is in a huge mess of bugs, latency issues, lag issues, rubber banding, characters and mobs running around without their heads, uh, the zombies will fall off of cliffs. Like there's just a large list of bugs and lag problems that the game has right now. So as it stands, I'm gonna tell you that my recommendation is not to get this game until they make some significant improvements to performance, stability, and just general bug care because the game itself I think is very good. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is I think it's a very promising game that could be really awesome. The gameplay loop is fun. The, the basics are there, the graphics look great and the fundamentals are in a good spot. It's just incredibly, incredibly buggy, and they need to find a way to address that sooner rather than later. You have a situation where pieces of zombies just start floating around for random reasons unknown. Even when they're dead, they'll just have chunks of them just floating in random directions. And these graphical issues are not alone tied to the zombies, but also the players as well. You'll have flashlights floating behind teammates. Sometimes you have teammates that are just a floating head. Their guns will disappear. They won't make sound. Sometimes their voices will break and mess up all over the place. You got all kinds of crazy bugs. On top of that, the lag and the desync is just out of control. You got some very serious delays between you and you hit something. Sometimes you'll go right through a target or it'll attack like three seconds later. You'll shoot something directly in the head and it'll go right through it. Another big problem is just desync around projectiles and explosives as well. So right here, I throw an explosive barrel, a gas tank that I'm gonna use to destroy all these zombies and it just desyncs and warps in and out of existence. You'll see it flicker out and I can only hit it when it's not flickering here because I don't even know where it is on my clock versus the server. So there's just a bunch of these other issues that exist right now that are preventing the game from being fully fleshed out. However, when the game does work, it's super fun. And this is the basic gameplay loop. You have a character that you can't keep unless you extract. So it's very permadeath, very realistic, which means that you'll have to land in these maps with a full loadout that you'll start with. You'll go through the process of completing objectives, clearing out areas, fighting zombies, collecting loot, and you'll get to the center of the map, which is going to be a control center area. And when you get to that area, you can cause a whole bunch of objectives to be completed, which will then cause you to be able to extract from the match. And if you extract, you keep your character XP, you get account XP, you level up, you get skills, you make your character stronger, but also the world gets more dangerous as well. As your character gets higher level and you keep surviving, the zombies get more aggressive, they get more plentiful, they gain new abilities and things like that. So the game gets more and more interesting. And I think that there is a lot of tension there when you can look past the bugs and the lag. Additionally, encourages a lot of teamwork as well. So you see the situation on, I see you see on screen here, which is a puzzle. There's tons of these that you have to do in the game, unlocking locks, breaking things open, getting generators to start, pouring things out. Like there's a lot of things you have to do where you lock your camera in and obviously you can't defend yourself when that's happening. And the zombies are constantly flooding you, attacking you at all times. So you either need to create enough space like barricading doors with wood or setting up proximity mines to avoid the zombies, or you need a teammate or two to watch your back while you're doing that and you'll have this all throughout the process. You will start in an empty squad and you can find other players in the eight player co-op match and you can have them join your squad by going up and using the interact button on them. They'll automatically join your squad and then you can see them marked on the map and they'll help you go through the process of doing that. And what's cool about this is if a teammate goes down, you can revive them, you can heal them as well. But if they end up fully dying, you actually will have them turn into a zombie, which means that if you can defeat them once they turn, it'll be like, they'll be down for like 10 seconds and they'll turn into a zombie and start attacking. Once that happens, if you defeat them, you get access to every piece of loot they had on them that you can then use for your run to stay alive and keep moving. The zombies are much more Dawn of the Dead style and not like, um... <laughs> <laughs> not like 28 days later style. They don't, there's a couple that do sprint at you. For the most part, you're able to control them and move around and usually just get overrun. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for new maps and also new zombie types as there's really only like three or four zombie types. There's the basic zombie, which are slow and dumb. There are the elite zombies, which are slow and dumb, but they have a ton of HP and they deal a lot more damage. There's the sprinter zombies that are very hard to deal with. And in most cases, you do have to shoot the, the sprinter zombies. Meleeing them is really rough unless you have a 
sledgehammer to stun them. And then you have basically it. There's these witch kind of zombies that don't seem to do anything in the current state. And they have promised they're going to add new maps, new zombie types, and other things to worry about. And overall, I think that the lighting and the graphics look great. And you actually keep this atmosphere of feeling like you need to continue through and running out of flashlight or running out of materials is really rough. And you do get a pretty big benefit by completing the objective areas. They have these locked vaults inside of the objective areas that when you complete all the objectives in that location, that point of interest, you get a bunch of weapons and ammo and gear and a bunch of other things, which allow you to move to the next objective. And it does feel pretty different because based on where you spawn on the map, you can end up having to come into the, the extraction zone from a different angle with different objectives. And it does kind of feel like you're on this rush to keep things moving and going along. And again, if it had a lot more content and was super stable, I'd be playing this game a bunch right now. Now, the build system is pretty straightforward. You basically will get a character at level one with one skill. And as you survive and escape, you will continually gain character XP and level up to the point where you can actually have eight different skills equipped. You can actually start creating your own build. Every time you level up one of these, you can choose one of three different skills. So again, you're crafting your character's experience and which character you choose when you die will determine what their first skill is and how it levels up that sort of thing. As you extract and get more XP, you also level up your account, which makes your, your skills better. You can see that this one is yellow, which means it got better because I leveled my account up. And you can actually create a whole bunch of different builds. I did a full melee run where I had a character that was fully loaded on two-handed melee weapons with melee head damage, less stamina consumption. If I ever got low on HP, I could swing infinitely without running out of stamina. This character is more about ammo stacks, medical stacks, gaining extra ammo when you pick up ammo, things like that. So you can have all kinds of really cool builds. And again, you're very attached to the character because if you do either, you know, disconnect from the game or you don't, you fail to extract or die, this character is gone and you'll be given a new character that you'll have to hold on to. So it's kind of like a rogue light in a way. You are keeping account progress, but you do want to go into the run and hold on to your character for as long as possible, which does make the, the fight scenes a little bit more tense because you know that if you die, you will lose all the progress you've made on that character and have to make a new one. And there's a decent variety of different weapons with different ammo types and different melee weapons as well. The kitchen knife can dismember. It does a lot of damage, but it has no stagger amount. You can get hammers, mallets, sledgehammers, uh, rebar, pipes, uh, tire irons that have decent staggers that can knock enemies away or create distance for yourself. You can do use long range rifles that have high damage from distance or high damage to, to head. You have shotguns, magnums, uh, handguns. There's a good mix of them. And you can actually get upgraded versions of everyone as you go along through the game. So you might start out with a hunting rifle, but as you get closer, you might be able to get an assault rifle or an M14 or something like that. And I think all of that plays really well together. Now, even if the game worked incredibly well right now, they would probably run into an issue of there just being um, a little bit of a content repeat. There is a massive map that you're playing on with a ton of different POIs, but it is the same map every single time. And eventually you'll start getting repeats on areas, right? So like I might revisit the bar and clear the bar out and I've done the bar before. I know exactly all the objectives where they are. It's all fixed. I can just do it over and over again. Same thing goes for the sawmill or the hospital or the ranger station or the lookout. All of that is the same. You can just do it over and over. On top of that, because you end up fighting, you know, a small number of zombies, it ends up being a little bit repetitive in that front too, because you obviously are just worried about being overrun. There's not like some specific zombies. I think they could probably benefit from more of like a Left 4 Dead or a Back 4 Blood style. I mean, not too aggressive, uh, but definitely something that helps mix things up that make you feel a little bit more stressed, especially as you go higher up in the difficulties, rather than just scaling the zombie HP and the amount of damage you need to deal to them in order to clear things out. So I think the foundation for the game is very good, and you should know what you're getting into if you decide to buy into the early access, because it is it is a bit of a buggy mess right now, so you want to wait for them to be able to upgrade it. Now, this is the same devs as Chivalry. They obviously have had a lot of experience in publishing games, online games, networked games, so hopefully they'll be able to figure out what's going on with the game and how to polish it up in a short period of time. And if they do, I think the game shows a lot of promise. So it's one to keep your eye on if you like survival games, if you like, you know, Hunt Showdown, uh, extraction games like Tarkov, that kind of thing. I think there's a lot of really cool options here and the systems are really strong. They just need to polish it up and add a bunch of content. And it is something that they're working on. They've done some server updates already and they have mentioned that they want to do uh, some more content, a new map they're already working on, new zombie types they're working on. So in the long term, it's a game to keep your eye on. But let me know what you think about the game down below. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channel
channels for other content and other stuff and other things.